Now, Hong Kong police have just made their first arrests under a new anti-protest law that has just been imposed by Beijing. Now, this comes as crowds mark 23 years since the end of British rule, with many waving pro-independence flags. Just yesterday, China imposed a new national security law in the region, which targets secession, subversion, and terrorism. And activists say the legislation erodes freedoms and that Hong Kong will never be the same. In fact, the UK has now said that up to 3 million Hong Kong residents will be offered the chance to settle in the UK and ultimately apply for citizenship. We have Craig Singleton, a former US diplomat, joining us from Arlington, Virginia. So Craig, give us a quick history lesson on Hong Kong. When did the UK come into the picture and when did the territory gain independence? Sure. So Hong Kong has always had traditionally strong ties with the UK, and it was in 1997 where we really saw that transition of power. In fact, the anniversary, the 23rd anniversary of that turnover was today, the July 1st, right. which is really an important holiday within Hong Kong and for Hong Kongers. Uh, and as you can imagine, uh, walking out into the streets for peaceful protests only to be um, set upon by violent uh, authorities is pretty disturbing for most Hong Kongers out there. Right, so first of all, why is Beijing so set on taking control of Hong Kong? Well, from their perspective, the situation in Hong Kong is one of the final irritants that President Xi Jinping is looking to neutralize. And so today's events were really set into motion last month when China's National People's Congress announced their plans to unilaterally impose this law. The law gives Chinese authorities very broad powers to tackle protests. Um, it's written to be deceptively broad, just so that China has the ample flexibility to apply the rules and, to the, uh, and the prescriptions to China and to Hong Kong. We've already seen about 300 arrests over the last 24 hours. We've also seen the disbandment of several prominent pro-democracy groups, all of which um, are happening because they are fearful of being arrested by Chinese authorities. It's a real departure from the norm and the autonomy that Hong Kong enjoyed for decades. Right. So how is the international community responding to what is going on today? Well, initial international reaction to Beijing's plans last month was pretty muted. But in response to today's crackdown, we've seen Japan, the UK, the EU, and Australia, among others, coming out and forcefully condemning brutal, the brutal repression there, with some countries even going so far as to threaten unspecified consequences. For its part, the US government stated that as Beijing now treats Hong Kong as one country, one system, so must the United States. Right. And to that end, plans are already underway to evaluate the special economic status afforded to Hong Kong by the US government. And Secretary of State Pompeo announced plans to impose visa restrictions on Chinese communist officials believed to be responsible for restricting freedoms in Hong Kong. Now, a horrifying update came out today um, in China regarding surveillance and control of the Muslim Uyghur population. We're hearing reports that Chinese authorities are forcing Uyghur women to take birth control and to stop population growth. How true are these reports? What have you heard? They're very startling, and so far they seem very well founded. I think it's really important that we view today's events within the broader context of China's human rights abuses, including what's going on in modern day concentration camps in Xinjiang province. Beyond the usual diplomatic recriminations, it's really vital that the US and other countries consider sanctioning Chinese officials in response to today's events, as well as all of these broader um, human rights atrocities throughout the region. All right. Well, thank you so much, Craig, for joining us and kind of breaking this down. We're moving on now.